All right, guys, so we're gonna be doing a video about something that y'all probably would be pretty interested in, at least I would have been uh, before I bought all this stuff and this guy copied me. But that aside, uh, 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 okay. <laughs> so the video we're gonna be talking about is basically doing NVG setup on a budget because most people out there, us included, unless we sell a kidney or something, can't poor. afford. Poor. Yeah, we're poor, hence the name, poor tech. Can't afford nice NVGs. So we came up with something that is kind of, it's not great, but it's something that does Sucks, work. Sucks, actually. <laughs> Sucks. It's not great, <laughs> <laughs> but it's not terrible. He uh, was in the military, still is in the military. Yeah, it's, it's unfortunately. Virtually, unfortunately. Uh, so he's used to using nicer NVGs, Gen 3 stuff, EBS 14s, whereas I'm not. So his experience is different than mine. So this to me is something I'm like, whoa, that's kind of cool. Uh, versus him is more like, ah, yeah, it's, it's okay, Grandpa. But so uh, we're gonna go over our setups, and the nice thing about these setups is his is a little bit more expensive than mine. Mine's cheaper, obviously. I'm probably the cheaper of the two of us. Definitely. But they our setups do in fact work. So if you're looking for something that does work but isn't gonna break the bank. You know, say sub two thousand dollars, which both of these are under two thousand dollars. Mine's under a thousand dollars. This might be a good setup for you to look into, or it might just be something to get you uh, into night vision, so you can kind of do some training with it, get used to it before you maybe save up for something nicer, which is probably what we'll end up doing at some point, save up for something nicer. But for the time being, this is at least something to get us into night vision. Um, I've already done a review of the helmet itself. If you're interested in that, um, go check back, it out. check it out. Um, but the cost of mine, I'll go over my setup first, um, the cheapest of the two. And the MVGs themselves, which we both have the same ones, uh, they're the Sightmark Ghost Hunters, which I'm kind of skeptical of Sightmark as a brand in general because they're kind of a cheaper company. But I decided to buy these to see if we like them or not. And they only cost about 230 bucks, which is what we got ours on currently, at least uh, on, Amazon. on Amazon is where we bought them. Um, currently, they're not actually in stock on Amazon. You might be able to find them somewhere else. Uh, didn't check, but they cost 230 bucks, which is pretty cheap. They're Gen One tubes, which uh, aren't the best. I think they're also Russian. So yeah, they're they're, they're Russian, Russian too. Um, so I was actually impressed with them. Um, granted, like I said, I've never used nicer NVGs, so I don't really know what to expect. I've seen pictures of how things look. I've seen videos of how things look, but I haven't had first-hand hands experience, which he has. Um, that said, he was impressed for the price, how well he did for the price. Fair? Yeah, that, that, that's fair. Okay. For 230 bucks, you probably can't, you can't get better for 230 bucks. So the price, you're not going to be able to get anything yeah. like this. We, we've done a lot of research on looking up something that could have been better for the option. And most other stuff was kind of cheapo, flimsy, digital stuff. And most of them were like, oh, four stuff power you, X. Stuff you give your little kid. Yeah, like, oh, you, it's so cool. The Call of Duty, you know, like, yeah. you know quad MVGs. You buy the $200 version of Call of Duty, you yeah. get fake night vision goggles. Which is what most of the budget NVG stuff is, it's digital. So we weren't interested in that. And most of those can't even do one time zoom anyway. So you're stuck looking at magnification. And there's also a delay on most digital stuff. Looking through a pair of binoculars. Yeah. So your face. the nice thing about these, one, uh, they make a model that's uh, dual tubes, but a lot of the reviews are kind of mixed. And basically people were saying that they either fit your face or they don't because they're not adjustable either way. So we decided to get the single tube and I'm left eye dominant anyway. So it's going over my left eye. It feels normal. I'm used to it. It doesn't bother me versus him. On the other hand, he absolutely hates it. So. Um, I'm left-handed, but I shoot right-handed, and I'm right-eye dominant. Yeah. So. Uh, so you're all, he's all kinds of stuff. But uh, the nice thing is they do fit. Um, actually, we'll get into that a little bit later. They do fit BBS 14 mounts with some modification. We'll talk about that in a little bit. But my setup specifically, one is the MVGs. You got the sight marks, which right here, if you can see them. Um, I did a little bit of modification to them to get them more user-friendly. Added some the, velcro and the, some duct tape because things the, move around. Yeah. So if you can see that, you can see um, they're relatively small. They're extremely lightweight. Um, the body is polymer, so it's not the most rugged thing. But again, for the price, what do you expect? It has a built-in IR illuminator. Which glows like a big red eye it's, in the dark. Yes, in the dark, without NVGs, it's basically it's a little the red size, light. Look at the diameter of a dime. 
Yeah, I would say so. It looks kind of like if someone's recording you with a video camera at night, yeah. that little red light that shows up. That's pretty much what it looks like. But you can only see that if you're there looking pretty much directly at you. So if I'm off to this, if you're off to the side, not looking at me, but you're looking like kind of past me. I'm looking at you, you're like dead. It, but if you're looking at me, <laughs> yeah. But if you're looking at me, I can see them. Do you see my red dot? You're dead. Yes. Uh, I, I would, you know, if you have proper training, sure. Um, the other setup I have, and again, I'll talk more about this specifically in a second, um, is a enforced light. This is a IR and white light. Um, it has the switch right Demo here. Demo forms with the light, turn it on. So you can see the light. And do that works. I <laughs> <laughs> can see the IR. <laughs> so the sight mark's 230 bucks. We didn't mention that, so that's pretty cheap. The Enforce light itself, which he went a different route, but I got the Enforce. It has pretty decent reviews. Um, we'll talk a little bit about it more in a second. Um, it costs 140 bucks. Um, I also have a Hollow Sun IR Illuminator. If you can see that on there, it's right here on the side. That's, that's and it comes just, with the pressure that's switch. just a laser. That is just an IR laser, no Illuminator, no visible laser. It's just an IR laser. Um, but it was only What's 200. It's like LS117, I think. Mm. I only remember that because I'm a Halo <laughs> nerd, sorry. Um, shows how old I am, I guess. Yes, it is. I'm old. All right, so you got that. It's 225 bucks, which is fairly cheap considering a lot of the other options out there. Um, the helmet, we've done a review on this long fry helmet. It's 200 bucks. The nice thing about this with NVGs is the weight of the helmet itself it makes it where you don't really have to have a counterweight. This is filled with just lithium battery, so it barely weighs anything. But it's nice because it doesn't pull your head forward because of the weight of the helmet. Um, the Rhino mount itself is about 75 bucks, depending on how popular it is at the time. Whenever I bought mine, I think I got it for like 60 or $65. When I bought mine like a week later, it was 80. Yeah, and then it was $80 because I guess I bought mine, so I wanted to decide, hey, let's jack up the price. Yeah, but so say roughly, yeah, so roughly we 75 sold bucks. We sold one, <laughs> popular. All right, so, and then the last thing that's part of this setup is the J-Arm, which is designed to mount PBS-14 to the Rhino mount, or the Rotos, the Rhino mount, whatever it's called, the arm. And it actually fits and works with this NVG, which is, I would say, it's probably its strongest selling point, which actually makes it viable. Right. Like all the, all the. So what that means is that if we wanted to buy a BBS 14 years later, we'd have to get new mounts. We'd have to get, get new mounts and everything. Yeah. We'd have to buy all the setup. We could just throw this piece of crap in the trash and put our PBS 14 in. Correct. <laughs> <laughs> trash. Give it to your grandkids, you know, whenever we finally yeah. save up to buy a nice NVG. Yeah. Um, give, it to over. give it to your friends who don't buy it. Give it to <laughs> we'll give it to our friends, yeah, for, for later. Because they aren't. Alright, so this is literally the exact same thing as his. Same mods, same J arm, same rhino mount, same everything. Copy me. Cooler patches, though. <laughs> um, he does have to cool back from one. Uh, Jealous. So, on the rifle, he decided to go with the, the just the laser and the IR light. I actually have. This is That's a surefire. Uh, white light only. It's the uh, M300 Scout Mini Scout. It's about 350 lumens, I think, something like that. Maybe just 300. Hence the M300, maybe. Probably. Um, this is the Hollow Sun uh, LS321R, the red version. It's got the IR laser, IR illuminator, and the IR and the uh, excuse me, the visible light or laser. And so. Uh, I decided to go that way instead because I kind of like having it all in one place instead of having to fiddle with one thing and then turn this on and turn that on and that kind of thing and worry about oh, I gotta move my hands around here because I gotta have my hand on this light and then I gotta turn my light on with this one and uh, da, 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 da. and I got them all put together with a Surefire dual pad uh, pressure switch. And I got the front one hooked up to the visible light and the back one goes to the IR. Boom. There's the uh, IR for you. And uh, another quick note with the uh, about the Hollow Sun in relation to the pressure switch is that you have to you press it all the way in. It was hard to press in for one. You press it all the way in. Once you finally get it all the way in, you have to spin it around until it actually works. Spin it around and find the sweet spot where it likes it to work. In this particular case, I don't know if it's on all of them, but it likes to where it's pointing straight to the left. I had it on the right and it wouldn't work and I just kind of twisted it around in the socket until it came on reliably. So I don't know if that's the pressure switch or the illuminator or that's common with all of them, I don't know. But uh, also when it comes to the throw of the illuminator, and I'm pretty sure it's because of the crappy knobs we have. Probably. But 
the illuminator doesn't really do anything. Like you can tell it's there, but in terms of, oh, well, I can really see that with the illuminator before I couldn't, you really can't tell. Like if I, if you can see it before the IR, it's not gonna yeah. help you. I would say like looking under the MVGs at it, you can see, I'd say you can see it out to probably 50 yards, but, but after that you can't see anything, right. but it's only really useful out to about 25. And the, yeah, it's only gonna do you any good inside 25 yeah. and that's mostly probably because of the gen one I've, we've seen i've seen other reviews where it does it's visible out to like 150 200 yards and you can still now the laser by our laser is fine the laser like, yeah, throws yeah. yeah but i mean if you i mean if, if you can see the laser further you can distinguish target to our nods yeah so um that's about oh yeah the total cost of all this crap put together is about seventeen hundred dollars just because of the surefire light and this was 800 bucks because it's a it's an ir illuminator and an ir laser and a visible so it's going to be a little expensive so to a total is going to be about 70 uh, 1700 dollars yeah and that's so. for the pressure pad switch oh and yeah and the pressure light. switch was 112 dollars yeah with the surefire yeah so yeah he wanted a little bit more simplistic setup and he wasn't a huge fan of the Enforce light, which I actually like okay. I mean, I like the Enforce light. It's just I yeah. didn't want to have to like turn this thing on and then turn that thing on and then have one of them. One you have to pick one of them to be constantly on, and that's not good. Yeah. Because if you do the IR light and you're fighting people that have night vision themselves, you're then giving yourself you're light. backlighting yourself just like you would with a visible light. Yeah. And then you, I you don't know, like the laser hanging out constantly because I just don't like things I like to have momentary so if you have to take your hands off of it it goes away and it's not constantly yeah. giving yourself your position away yeah, like pointing, pointing on walls and backlighting yourself and blinding yourself with it and that kind of stuff so i like to have uh just momentary all together boom right here switch back ir white light that yeah. kind of thing so yeah, it's, it just it's like light discipline just like trigger discipline and everything else you don't like, want to give away your position yeah. you should only use your light when you need to you shouldn't just have it on all the time yeah. saying here i am same thing goes for IR. Um, yeah, that is one of the cons of this is the pressure switch. Um, it It's a temporary or you can just set the IR laser to on all the time, which is probably what I would do if I had to, because I have to make one on all the time. Either the IR light has to be on all the time or the IR laser has to be on all the time. And I feel like the laser is a lot less likely to give away your position yeah. than a light would be. Yeah. So that's honestly what I would do. And in the enforce in the position where it's at, which is at 12 o'clock on my rail, is not in the way of the red dot at all. So, I mean, it's a little bit in your way, but it, it's above it still. And this is just a, a you know, take the 512 model. So it's still pretty low setting compared to a lot, a lot of other options. And something else I didn't mention about this is uh, this is the EOTech I have on here. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have any riser, so it's mounted directly to the to the to the rail and receiver so when you look through it it obstructs half of your sight picture in the eotech it does it's it's, so, it's pretty chunky and it uh because it sits really high up it's got like a really high riser on it yeah it does and so when you when you look through the eotech and if you have a riser or a, a weird mount or a quick uh, key, uh, like a quick a quick mount. attached mount on your eotech it probably won't be a problem but i don't so uh, if you're looking through it, the donut of death in the EOTech is actually like nestles itself in between these two things on top of it. Yeah. <laughs> and it kind of gives you a nice point of reference, but it still blocks out the entire bottom half of your sight. It's true. It's kind of like having a front sight post, yeah. like without having a front sight post. Kind of gives you that reference point, which has its pros and cons, I guess. Yeah. So if you're aiming correctly through the red dot, like you should with both eyes open, it's not an issue. But if right. you for some reason have to aim with just one eye for whatever reason, it's in your way. So. Right. blocks out the bottom half so that's a it's definitely a con I mean you can mount it on the side if you wanted to switch things up but something's going to be either on that or I guess you put your light on the other well, side well you want to talk about how they're meant to mount on the side because the yeah the so, are so, so <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point so if you buy this specific model uh, the one that I have that's just the IR laser if you mount it on the side apparently it's designed to be mounted on top because the dials on it are mounted, are, the adjustments are up and down on the side, and then you have left and right pretty much on the bottom. And if you mount it on the top, that's correct. If you turn it to your side, obviously those are now different. So I went ahead and just t put a piece of tape on there and wrote the correct I thought, instructions. I thought, you, I thought it was backwards, but that was meant to be mounted on the side, mounted on the top here. Yours is. Oh. They're both different. Not sure why one that one. I guess because that one's bigger, they assume you wouldn't put it on top. But since this one's smaller, they, they assume you would put it on top. Literally, everybody puts it on top. 
Yeah, everybody. Pretty much everybody. Yeah, I've ever seen puts it on top, except for me because of the shirt, the enforced light. Like you're gonna dip it. Yes, I tried putting the enforced light on the side. It doesn't feel right. It feels more natural being on top. So I had to put mine on the side. So if you put it on top like everybody else does, you'll be fine with this one. But just know, I just wrote the actual direction. So now this one's actually the right and left, and this one's the up and down. So just a note. It was kind of weird at first. I was like, did they install this thing wrong? <laughs> or am I just dumb? They, Turns out I was just dumb and kind of a little and bit dumb. The, the dumb for, they were dumb for doing it that yeah. way. Yeah. And then I'm sure it says in the directions, but like all men, we didn't throw those away immediately. Yeah, I didn't we don't actually read <laughs> anything. I slapped it on there and was like, okay, let's it, go. Yep, because this was the same way. Whenever we were trying to slide it's like, hmm, this we is where it's going. We were, we were trying to bore slide it or whatever, and we were, we were turning it, and we were seeing the visible laser go the opposite direction. Go the opposite direction, direction. yeah. Like, mm, Strange. So, yeah. so this one is not meant to be on the side yep. instead of on top because if you were, well, we were turning it left and it was going it was going up. up I yeah, think we were yeah. turning it, trying to go make it go left. It was you could see the visible laser because the the IR I didn't mention this. The IR laser and the visible laser and this thing are slid together. Yeah. So you can zero it using the visible laser. You don't have to go. You don't have to go out wait till it gets dark to go out there and visible zero it in. Yeah. So we were bore sighting it, I suppose. <laughs> And uh, we were trying to turn it left up here because the left and right's up here and the up and down are on the north side. And we were turning it left according to this thing and we were seeing the laser go up. Go upwards, yeah. So so that's something to just note. And obviously just play around with it and don't just assume, oh, it's mounted on top now so these are right. Just play with it and figure out wherever it's supposed to be mounted. But that's just for those specific models. Um, a, I guess let's just go over the pros and cons of each of these things. Um, um, so, which we covered a little bit already. The MVGs, the nice thing about these, they're cheap. Um, most people can't afford, you know, $3,000 PBS 14s or anything above that. Um, at some point, I'm going to get some eventually. I might be have a gray beard by the time I can afford them. I don't know. But at some point, I would like Ooh, to get some. Come and gone. Yeah, yeah they come and gone by then. But this is something now to at least get me into night vision and kind of get some training, some practice, kind of get used to using stuff on there. But they're cheap first uh most important thing and second i would say as a pro as well as they're not smooth they're not <laughs> digital i think that's right because everything digital i've seen out there just looks super che cheesy and flimsy and you got to mount it on here with like gopro mounts and it, like that's not solid at all i want something that's at least somewhat solid um there's no blemishes from what i can see there's no dark spots yeah for gym one russian tubes they're pretty clear yeah i mean i i mean i look through there and you can see maybe a little speck in like one tiny area on the edge but that also could just be my eyes but they're super clear for what they are minus the caveat of like the kind of fishbowl on the edge but we'll get to that in a second um they do have a built-in ir luminaire which i think is nice um it, well, that's because they're entirely dependent on IR. Yes, so that's a con, which let's get into. So they have a built-in IR, but you need it with these things. Um, without the IR, on like a, a nice moonlit day, they do improve. You can see about 20 yards. Yeah, you, you can see, well, you can see farther than that, but you can see details probably about that far. Yeah. Like if someone has a gun, they're carrying a gun out at, say, 50 yards, you can see them, you can see they have a gun. You probably won't be able to see facial features on Might be your stuff. friend, but he's Might be your friend, but he's got a gun. Bow. Um, you can see out to, I would say, 300 yards, like trees and branches and stuff with it, but you won't see detail nearly that far. But you can see, like, if a vehicle is moving over there, right. you can see it, you can see it was a vehicle. You're not going to be like, oh, that's a Chevy Impala, but you can yeah. see that it's a vehicle. Why would you pick a Chevy Impala? I don't know. Why that's why a you say? crappy cop car. <laughs> just crappy cars in general. I mean, True. Okay, I'm so... Police into it. <laughs> police. Sorry, hit a, hit a soft spot. Yeah. Um, so another negative is one, they have this back adjustment for your eyepiece, which is fine, but it moves. Oh, those things are, they're like loose. Almost. Yeah. Like you just move it and it goes, woo, spins mine's, itself out of focus. Yes. <laughs> so mine's looser or tighter than his is, but I, we just put a piece of tape on there to keep the eye focus adjustment from moving. And then it also has the front one, this actual focus for distance, so near or far away. Um, the cons of this thing is one, it's Gen 1 technology. So all the negatives that come with Gen 1 technology come with this thing. All the negatives. All the negatives. So it does improve without any IR elimination. It does make your vision better. Um, it's not significant, but I would say uh, just walking outside from being inside, like just immediate, like how, you, how well you would see from there, from, from that point up until like you, you get natural night vision, like you're out there for 30 minutes, 45 minutes, whatever it takes for you to get your full night vision just with your regular eye. That difference, just basically do it again. Does that make sense? 
Yes. Like I feel that like. Was playing to me. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> so that, so that ability to, I guess, a, a better vision at night, just naturally, uh, this does it one more step, I guess. So you can still see better than you would with the naked eye. I wouldn't say significantly, but it's it's a pretty decent leap. But whenever you add the IR to it, obviously you can see illuminated pretty well as long as you have something that actually shines out that far. I totally didn't mention one bad thing about my. Go for it. Illuminator. Oh, so it has a the focus because there's a little knob back here that focuses how wide or how narrow the beam of the illuminator is, and it is. It doesn't get very wide. Like once you get to a just about as wide as it goes even up close you almost can't see it no so but once you get as narrow as it gets it's like this big like around yeah yeah so it, you now if you're looking at something and if, if you have it narrowed down as narrow as it go and you put it on something you can see it really well yeah but obviously you can only see this much yeah like with, whatever you're looking at with this one the enforce is basically a floodlight yeah and so it works and out to is, about 50 75 this meters. is like a spotlight and that's like a floodlight but this isn't a super effective spotlight yeah. <laughs> exactly well now now at least with gen one right. if you had gen three tubes it would work gen fine two plus or gen three tubes would be fine yes so it's one of those what was your preference do you want a floodlight for maybe cqb type stuff up close or and with these they are not seen super far anyway so the question is how much benefit do you really get or you can go with more of a spotlight where you're not shining up the whole room but if you see a target a person whatever you need to you can illuminate them way better than this would mm -hmm. so there's pros and cons of both you have to decide what's more important i guess to you we chose different things because we like different things um Another negative, other than the fact that it relies on IR, is if you're both using these and, and the IR is on there, you can't look at each other because yeah, you're going to blind each other. other. So that's something to note. Because they're really focused yeah. IR illuminators, and you, if you're like in the same room as each other and you turn to look at each other, you're like, oh. If you turn to look at each other, it looks like you're looking at a flashlight. So yeah. that's it's something like to be aware like of. a flashlight in your face. Yeah. So if, if you're going to use the IR on here and other people are using MVGs, they're all going to hate you. So, I hate just, you yeah, yeah, I mean, it's true. <laughs> right back at you. No. Well, that's something to consider. So, what I would say is probably don't even use the IR on this unless you're just really hyper aware of that fact. As soon as you look at somebody, like, unless, unless you're like you really need it, I will. if you really need if you're like it, like inside of a house, you can probably get away without it. Yeah. If you're in a super dark area where you need IR, I would almost rather just turn on my IR flashlight and just kind of use it to flood the area, and so I'm not shining directly at people. But again, that's whatever training you want to use for that. Um, there is, with his, his mounted directly to the, I forgot what this was called, the J-arm, um, without any kind of special requirements. Mine, I don't know if it's an older J-arm or what, but I had to actually use a small little rubber gasket because there was a small space, a small gap in between where the screw mounts onto it, so it was loose and wobbly. So I just put a, a gasket on there and that solved the problem. But just be aware of that. Um, there is a bad fishbowl effect with these things. Oh, I say bad. It's worse than nicer stuff. It's like, what, the outer ring of the thing is about 25%. Basically looking into a fishbowl. Yeah, you're kind of looking compared, into a fishbowl. Compared to a PBS 14, it's terrible. It's terrible. Bad. Yeah. And see, I would... There's, uh, there's like, there's no one's, I would say there's no fishbowling in the PBS 14. Yeah. Uh, the outer ring of it, probably the outer 25% of it, is basically not usable because it's distorted so much and you can't really see details. Now, granted, what you can see, it's clear, uh, but you do have to manually focus. Um, they are not waterproof, at least not from what I can see. I imagine if you dropped them, they probably wouldn't survive. Yeah, if you if you were to drop this helmet, and on top of that, those MVGs, they're done. I mean, there's there's no way they would survive that. They're, we haven't tested that. Maybe we should test. We haven't. Whenever we buy nicer stuff, we'll drop one. <laughs> His. <laughs> yeah. Whenever we get PBS 14, we'll drop one of these on concrete from shoulder height a couple times. But I will say, the fact that they're built kind of cheaply is nice, and the fact that they're lightweight. So right. they are really light. They don't drag your head forward, so that's a plus. Um, but they're not waterproof, so if it's raining. Put them in a Ziploc bag, put them somewhere in your backpack where they're not going to get wet. Um, so that's a negative. I'm sure they would survive getting maybe a little bit of sprinkle or something, but I wouldn't yeah. expect them to last in water at all. Take a spill into a, a lake. Or yeah, if you, if you go into a lake, they're probably done. Um, the battery mounts themselves. It takes two AA batteries. We use lithium batteries. At least I put lithium batteries in mine. Um, and there's no sort of gasket along here to keep out water. Okay, so... Specifically, this IR laser here, the pros, it works. Um, we tested it out to about, what, 100, 150 yards, and you can still see it. 
past 150 to maybe 200 yards at the most, like you're you're gonna lose it. It's not wide enough to really see past that anymore. Granted, with these MVGs, you can't see that far anyways to really utilize it. So with this setup, it's it works fine. Um, it has a solid lockup on this one. It's a fairly low mount on here versus his is a little bit higher. Um, but it's also just the body itself. Um, but it, it mounts fairly low, so even if you had it on top, you can still see over with a red dot. Um, the cons is there's only an IR illuminator on there. There's no visible laser, um, so if you want that, you're going to have to pay a little bit more like he did. There's also no illuminator on there as well. So that's a negative. Um, for the Enforce, this is more of a lightweight AR build. You can see I don't have a Ford Assist on there. Insert controversial comment here. Um, if you didn't want to go into the chamber, you shouldn't force it into the agree. chamber. I agree. Yeah, I'm of the mindset if something doesn't go in, you probably just tap rack. And if it's not going after that, you might want to recess things. But I don't think shoving around into the chamber forces it. didn't want to go naturally. Yeah, they didn't want to go naturally. I, it just racked around out of there. Uh, it also has a, a lightweight pencil barrel, it's a Faxon barrel. Um, so I just I tried to make this one as lightweight as possible. So the this enforced light. This was as heaviest as I could go. Absolutely. That, basically, you tie a brick on the end of it, that's his gun. But <laughs> the enforced light is really lightweight. It's made of polymer. It's like a fiber, glass reinforced, whatever polymer. Polymer, I think, is fine. I'm not an old, you know, oh, those plastic guns, Tupperware guns. I'm not that Wait, person. you're not old? I'm old, but I'm not that old. <laughs> I'm not a boomer. Okay. So, sorry. Hey, we just lost three viewers. Oh. But, um... We didn't want those viewers. We didn't anyway. want those viewers anyways. So there's a switch on here for the IR invisible laser. It's this quick little switch, so that's nice. The mount on here is kind of cheesy. It has a screw that keeps it um, kind of in place, but once you unscrew it, all you do is press on there and it's just a little hinge. And so that could be more solid, but I don't think it's gonna fall off. I just wish, I would just feel better, sleep it better at night if it was like a metal really piece. Really that would keep you up? That, it would keep me up all night. Keep me up for three nights in a row. But it hasn't moved anywhere. It has a little lockout feature here. This little switch. This also kind of feels pretty cheap and flimsy. I could probably rip this off if I want to. But it keeps you from accidentally pressing the light. So there's that. Um, those are the pros and cons, I guess, of that one. But it does light up. I'd say about 50 to 75 yards of flood. And beyond that, it's not really lighting up much. Um, the button location, I think, is probably this thing's strongest selling point. I can go straight from white light if I want to, or if I want to just come back a little bit and hit my pressure switch, I can. But it's not a weird funky where I need a tape switch with this if I mount it on top. Um, the cons, I guess, of this thing is it's only 700 lumens. And we like all the lumens. All of them. All of them. We want Except, every single one of them. I say that in my life. He says that, but his is lumens. 300 lumens. So mine's significantly brighter than his, but most lights now are around 1,000 lumens or more. So this is less than that, but it still has good throw. It still lights up pretty well. The Surefire in my pocket has double lumens. Correct. I think my phone actually is brighter than his That's light. Not, that is not true. Exaggeration, but it's close. <laughs> Um, the mounting, I already talked about that. So that's kind of the, the pros and cons of all these things. If you guys have questions about any of this stuff, just let us know. Um, be more than happy to answer. Yeah, the comment section is going to be popping. It's going to be popping. I've had a few questions. Um, but I will say that another negative about this is the tape switch, the little pressure pad switch on here. I'm not going to say it's garbage, but weak. it feels really cheap. It's weak sauce. So, like, you press the button. I mean, you can't really even tell you're pressing the button unless you can see the laser itself. But there's no positive kind of click like there is with that. Um, so that's a negative. Um, again, price is the positive for it, which is what we're going for here is to show you how to do something relatively cheap. You want to talk about any pros and cons of your stuff? Or? I already did. You already did. All right. So again, nice thing is total cost of each of these things. Mine was under 900 bucks. It's 870-ish dollars for the mount, the J arm, the night vision, and then these two specific things. So that's pretty cheap when it comes to, the, to night vision. I mean... Yeah, yeah. You, you can't deny it. it's a cheap way to get into it and it's a way just to see if you even like it and most people probably don't even have the ability to use night vision to train with or to go to the range with or anything so. I would say most people wouldn't even see the need for it I would agree with that well, I don't need night vision I have a flashlight yeah most people think they have a flashlight but there's I mean yeah. you know when no, never mind. okay never mind. so <laughs> we're not going to get into tactics when it comes to white light versus MVGs but if you guys have any questions Again, feel free to ask us. Um, I would be more than happy to answer them. But again, mine was 870 years of what, 1600? 1700. 1700. So if you wanted a little bit of a nicer setup, and granted, you can get a newer flashlight that's surefire and it would be brighter yeah, than you that get one. The that's M6, an older model. That's an M300, so I would assume it means it's got 300 lumens. Yep. You get like the M600. It'd be significantly 600 better. lumens. I mean, just get a, 
Go get a brighter light than I did. Buy a brighter light than he did. <laughs> He's working on it. I got the like, plus I got the like five years ago. So it's probably got like broad new brand, te brand new technology in their lights and that kind of stuff. So yeah, but um, not all lumens are created created equal. Correct. And I will say his pressure switch the is significantly it's nicer silk. than this one. It's, yeah, only <laughs> silk. Um, but the, again, the one issue with that it may have just been that specific hollow sun, or it may just be the hollow sun as a general. But the plug didn't work. Yeah, until you had you like had twist it, it around until you got it right. It, it was strange. So the wire is actually sticking out to one side, but it wouldn't work anywhere else on facing the other way. I don't know. It's weird. But all right. I hope you all have a great night. And do you have anything else? Yeah. If you got any questions, we got a bunch of ideas for videos. So it's true. If you We're trying to actually care about us at all, you'll subscribe and uh, comment and like. And comment, share subscribe, and, like, all that jazz. You know, um, shameless plug for our you know channel has like what seven subscribers. Oh, not even that. <laughs> not even that. I was shot myself. <laughs> um, yeah. So if you like what you see, if you don't mind hearing us talk, because I know I'm never gonna watch this video. Yeah. No. <laughs> I'm not watching. Oh, you're gonna watch it. He, watching he's gonna be video. curious. All right. But again, if you have any questions, just let us know. Appreciate it. See y'all. Yep. No one's going to watch this 30-minute video.